Hello everyone, today in this video we will be discussing the most important question from the module 5 which is regarding the Tomaslow's algorithm. It's not actually like an algorithm how you write for the labs and all, it's like you have to actually explain what are the steps happening along with the diagram. So I will be telling you what is the diagram and what is the first, second, third and last step, what are the key points you need to write in between. So make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to my channel for more dislikes like this without wasting any more time, let's get started. So the question you can expect for 10 marks, let's have a look at what's the question and how do you answer it step by step approach. So write the Tomaslow's algorithm, this is only the five, uh, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 letters, the, uh, 4 words they will give and it is worth for 10 marks. The first thing what you have to write is what is Tomaslow's algorithm, what it does. Okay, Tomaslow's algorithm allows execution of instructions in data flow order rather than sequential order. Sequential order means stepwise, first step, second step, third step, fourth step, like that it will not do, it will do in a data flow order. The data will be flowing from one part to the another part, in that way if the uh, something happens that is uh, what is followed by the Tomaslow's algorithm. It can increase the throughput of the unit. Throughput means whatever is the output I'm getting. Throughput is higher when I'm giving less input, I'm getting more output. Okay, That is called as throughput by avoiding pipeline stalls. Pipeline stalls means pipeline will be stalled in between, some blockage will happen and it avoids that. How it avoids that? By using the data flow order rather than sequential order. If you are following a sequential order, there might is, there is a chance that it can uh, get stuck in the pipeline stall. Okay, So that is getting um, uh, repulsed by this one, Tomaslow's algorithm. Each pending instruction is held in a reservation station until it gets executed, then it will be issued out of order. Okay, so this is the diagram which you have to make. Here we have the instructions. First, you have to make the instructions coming like this, and they will be going to the reservation station. This is called as what reservation stations. Here, all the things will be reserved, whatever the instructions and the data you have to perform, everything will be reserved there, and those will be ops to EU. Okay, so they will be sent to the EU, and from EU, it will be sending the tag result back to this one. If it is not complete, if it is complete, it will be sent to the virtual registers where the actual uh, tagging will happen. This I'll be dis uh, discussing in each step what is happening here. So it fetches its operand from a single uh, special register file. Whatever the operands is needed for the operations, operator and operand is needed, right, for the instructions to happen. For the operands, we'll be uh, fetching it from a special register file. Each register in the file holds either an actual value or the tag indicating the reservation station. In the, reserv in the reservation station, there were two things. If you remember, it was an actual value and the tag. So it will produce the register value when it completes. If it is Even if it is an actual value or a tag, we don't care. What uh, we care about is it produces the re register value when it gets completed. Okay, That all is happening in the register station. That's the part two. In the third part, with the instruction and its operands, either the values or the tags, the, so the operands can be what? Either the values or the tags. Another key point are stored in the reservation station. The instruction and operands are uh, stored in the reservation status, uh, station and uh, reservation station watches the results returning from the execution pipelines. Once the execution is happened, they will be returning that from that and the uh, reservation station will be watching that and whenever a result matches to one of its operands, means that's the execution we need to do, that's the operand we need, that's the tag we need to perform, everything uh, gets matched up and then uh, it records the value in the place of the tag. In whatever the place of the tag that value is there it will get recorded whenever it matches okay that's what we are going to execute right when the station has its value of both its operand it may issue and the instruction to an execution pipeline when these two things are there and uh, when the tag result returns from the pipeline the rs is cleared now you have in the rs all the instructions and everything performed what happens when an instruction is getting performed and it's over we'll be getting an output that output it may be needed to be stored or it may not be needed to be stored and there is a special reason for that that also has marks you need to write the result value if needed can be stored in the distance register or else it can be um, subsequent instruction has to be modified the result is discarded if, if it has been modified can be discarded or else it has not been modified if it is same as the previous one we need to store it into the register uh, this uh, destination register if it's needed uh, like you think that it might be needed in the later point of time so that, uh, that time will be storing the result value and the special reason is that this is because its value in sequential execution would be overwritten if it's a sequential execution step one step two step three if you are performing the operations on the same data it will get overwritten uh, finally so at that uh, time you have to uh, avoid this execution so at that time it will not be written okay that's all make sure the like button subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next